everybody this is Julissa thank you everyone for coming back to my channel it is Monday today is I believe it's, it's the 26th I'm sorry so today is July 26th 2021 I'm gonna do some type um, kind of like a different video that I normally do but I it needed to happen I guess let me just tell you something there's nothing hidden that's not gonna become come to light and one thing like everybody else in this world that doesn't like I don't like to be lied to I don't like when people are not honest and I'm sure you know everybody out there they, everybody hates to be lied to and this is why you know we always have to check ourselves before we you know we because it's easy to lie but we have to check ourselves before that. and the only reason why I'm doing this video is specifically about this topic is the fact that I'm Dominican and I am a fashion designer so before I continue guys I want to say thank you so much for coming back to my channel please don't so, so um, don't forget to subscribe and share this video I'm gonna do it very quick um, if I don't know if I said it in one of my videos before but I was born the Dominican Republic and being a fashion person somebody who at a very young age i knew what i wanted to do i wanted to be a fashion designer this happened before i became a selena from way before that I, I mean i remember sketching dresses when i was very very young the reason that i'm saying all of this is the fact that any dominican person out there who has some type of fashion interest in this world it's gonna hear the words, it's gonna hear about designer Oscar de la Renta, right? That's what you hear, especially when you're from the Dominican Republic. He's the most well-known um, Dominican uh, fashion designer in the world. I guess you can say he has a great history in his career, very well-known. We know he passed away in October of 2014 at the age of 82. I discovered years ago now, like when I was growing in the Dominican Republic, I discovered that he actually lived very close to where I am located right now in Denver, where I am based here in Connecticut. He actually um, has a, a house in Kent. So when I came to Denver, my family moved to Denver. I had no idea, you know, everybody knew I want to be a designer and all of that, and I was going to pursue it, but, you know, it, it, it happened years after that I learned that Oscar de la Renta actually had a house here so close to me, you know, a man who perhaps, you know, I would look up to, I will always feel so like inspired by him, his story, you know, he's Dominican like I am and he wanted to do fashion like I wanted to do fashion. So you tend to look up to people like that and, you know, um, not like an idol, like I know some people who look at him as an idol, I never did, I looked at him kind of like an inspiration to be like, oh, you know, he's basically doing everything that I want to do, so whatever. Anyways, guys, the time goes by, the years pass, I went to fashion school, went to school in New York City, did all of the things um, when it comes to fashion, I always wanted to meet him, that was one of my dreams. One crazy day, me and my friend decided to go drive around Ken. As, like I tell you guys, Ken is not that far away from Denver. So I was like, let's just go. Maybe we'll see him. You know, it was a summer day. So when we, we were thinking in our head, you know, maybe we'll see him just walking by. And we can stop and introduce ourselves and talk to him and whatever. So we did a very crazy idea because, you know, nobody wants to be like approached like that especially when you you know you want to like tell them what you do and how much they inspire you nobody be no nobody famous wants to do that type of approach especially in their hometown when they just want to relax and be away from the spotlight i guess you can say so we did i never found him you know we asked around the local shops which is a very bad idea as went in local shops and say, hey, do you know about Oscar de la Renta? You know, do you see him here? We drove by the entrance of his mansion. We drove everywhere around Kent. By the way, Kent is beautiful. By the way, it's a beautiful town. So if you have the time to visit, go ahead. Kent Falls is there too. 
amazing i loved it i like to drive up there sometimes it's beautiful but anyways we never i never got to see him right and because julissa uh, just like everybody else makes mistakes so i didn't know that everything happens in god's timing one day years pass one day i'm in new york city for a job interview happened to be for a fashion industry i'm standing um i remember just next to brian park going towards Seven Avenue, you know, the fashion district in New York City. And I'm just waiting there, standing at the light, waiting for that hand to turn to white with the fear so I can cross the street and look to my left and there is Oscar de la Renta standing right next to me. And that's how life is. You know, sometimes when you try to make something happen, it doesn't happen. You have to just stop forcing things to happen everything happened in god's timing but anyways i'm not going to speak about that encounter that i had with him all i want to say was a great surprise and was i was so thankful i had got to speak to him and thank god for that one-on-one -on -one encounter that i had with him but today july 26 2021 i discovered something about oscar that i never would have imagined because this is a person you know, as like I said, he died in 2014, right? October 2014. And I remember watching his last show in New York Fashion Week. So Fashion Week is in September. I saw his live stream. I made the time for it. I'm like, I'm going to watch Oscar's show. It was beautiful. It's like all like the pink and the garden and stuff. And I saw him on that show. And then October came and he passed. And I was just thinking, wow, you know, there he go. There, there's life. You know, you create so much, you have such a great career, and then you're gone like that. And, you know, I kind of feel sad and whatever, but today, like I said, the main thing that I learned to today is that, you know, being from the Dominican Republic, right? Not only do you know Oscar de la Renta, he's like the most well-known Dominican fashion designer. You also know a name called, a, a designer named Sully Bonelli, which, by the way, I knew about him years ago. This guy, I, you know, I knew about him so long ago that even in my college years, we were talking about designers who inspired you. And I remember speaking, doing my presentation specifically on Sully Bonelli. So it was great um, to see this interview. So he just recently got interviewed um, by a Dominican show, I guess you can say. Not sure how that came on my YouTube channel. I mean, on my not in my channel, but on my feed. And I was like, I have to look at his interview. Like, I haven't heard about Sully Bonelli in so long. But anyways, he, I knew he worked with Oscar de la Renta. So I have the interview. It's, a, it's like a two-minute clip where the interviewer asked Sully Bonelli in Spanish. Was asked, because Sully Bonelli is an openly gay person, okay? Openly gay. There's no doubt about it. You know, he been, he said he's been gay forever and like whatever. Anyways, so I trust the source in this case. Sully Bonelli worked with Oscar for many years. He helped Oscar. He was one-on-one -on -one with Oscar. And the interviewer happened to ask him, was Oscar de la Renta gay or homosexual? And he said, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to play to you as the video. But he actually said, he said, I don't know who might not like to hear this, but he was and he had boyfriends. And not just one boyfriend, he had many boyfriends. So, to me that was a shocker let me just tell you why because this is this one <laughs> nothing happens like everything that you do in the, in the dark comes to light okay immediately after i heard Sully bonelli confess to this answer this question about oscar de la renta being homosexual immediately i thought about moises de la renta which is oscar de la renta's son so when Oscar de la Renta, first wife, passed away in 1984, I believe, he went to the Dominican Republic, Oscar de la Renta, and adopted Moises de la Renta, who, as we know, in case you haven't followed the story about him, um, he, you know, he brought him from the yard over here, and I don't know why I keep thinking about him immediately when I, when this, when I learned that Oscar de la Renta was actually gay. Um, even though he had a wife and he adopted um, her children after, you know, he remarried after the first marriage. 
I never, I don't know why I keep thinking about Moises La Renta. And I wonder, you know, um, excuse me, my I wonder if Moises de La Renta is doing okay. Because let me just tell you why. When Oscar de La Renta passed, the biggest news that came out of that besides him passing because he had cancer was the fact that he didn't leave anything to Moises. They had a falling out, you know, in 2005, I believe, Moises did his own collection and they seemed to be very agreeable with a lot of stuff. And then, you know, then they had a falling out and, you know, Moises was taken out of the wheel and all of that. Like it was, it was very deep, the fact that he actually took him out of the wheel, didn't leave him anything. $26 million fortune, didn't leave anything to Moises. To, sorry, to Moises, his beloved son, I guess you can say, because, you know, I felt like Oscar de la Renta, his first marriage passed, the wife passed in the first marriage, he felt kind of lonely or something, and then he went and got, uh, he adopted Moises from the Dominican, and then, uh, for some reason, I hope to God that this never happened, guys, I don't know why, I don't know why this is coming to my head, I I hope that never happened, but I, I'm seeing some type of molestation. I'm seeing molestation here. That's the biggest word that comes out of me linking all of this that I have. I was not even going to speak about it today, but all I'm saying is that it's just so weird to me that somebody well known like him, you know, his wife, first wife passes away. And he goes and gets a kid from the Dominican Republic. It's not like he, like he, he remarried and has a, a type of, you know, household that's built to have to raise a child. I'm not saying that single parents shouldn't do that, but you know, a lot of people who adopt kids are like, you know, they have kind of like their life together in the sense that they have a partner. You know, they have somebody who can help out with the, with the with childhood and like the needs of a child to raise a child in a home and things like that. And I think about Moises, right? I was thinking about him. I haven't heard what he's doing lately, nothing like that, you know? Um, and then I thought about Julio Iglesias. And Oscar de la Renta, such a good, he was such a good friend with Julio Iglesias. And then I wonder is Julio Iglesias also homosexual? that people haven't really said anything about him. You know, he has a very peculiar way of, you know, dancing. And um, his aesthetic, I guess you can say, is very unique and things like that. But, you know, there are things that are so hidden. It's so annoying that, you know, that people think that they can just live life and fool other people like that. You know, in I guess you can say in 2017, when I was in Grand Central, when they this they unveiled the Oscar de la Renta um, f uh, stamp for the U.S. Postal Services, I was there, right? You know, it was a great event. I was so happy to be able to be there. You know, I actually met the post the postmaster of the Dominican Republic. I was able to be there with everybody. I mean, Hillary Clinton was there. There were so many people there. Um, I saw Diane Van Fastenberg. It was such a great event. But one thing that I will never forget about Diane, I I'm looking over here because I know I still have that stamp. They were giving out this big um, brochure type of like event um, brochure that they give you when you go to an event. And it has... Oscar de la Renta's face on it and the way his picture is like he's covering one eye and we all know what that is right you know everybody who has this type of money and power in this world is somehow associated with the big you know people who rule this world you know like I, mean, I don't want to say here before they block this video but we all know what you're, we're talking about when people cover one eye you know what I'm talking about. So I remember seeing that, you know, even though I went there, I took photos and stuff, you know, I am a learning person. Like I'm not perfect by any means. Like I said to you guys before, this man is put on a pedestal. If you're a fashion person from the Dominican Republic, you look up to Oscar de la Renta as like the ultimate goal for yourself. You know, thank God I don't look at him like that. You know, at least not anymore to be honest. But like I said, you know, growing up, I used to be called Oscarita because I like, fashion and you know 
creating fashion and things like dresses and things like that creating clothes so um i don't know like you know everybody you know god gives you the uh, the the will uh your free of free will you know one day you die you answer to god what you do with life you know we all do bad things and things like that but the reason why I am very concerned about him knowing after he passed for so many years already ago that he was actually homosexual. And there are a lot of people out there, guys, that are very open in their sexual preference. And that's, you know, that's they're very open with it. The fact that he, like, very limited people knew about Oscar de la Renta it's a big shocker. I mean, I just Google him, you know, to see if he, if anybody else was talking about it. And like, he comes up as one of the top designers who were never homosexuals. Like, male designers who were never homosexuals. Yet, you have somebody confirming it. Somebody, it's not just like, oh, one person who did an internship with him and he said, this is somebody who worked with him side by side. Sully Bonelli worked many years with him. And he said, yes, he... He was homosexual and he had boyfriends and and one time he had a boyfriend that came from overseas and I was able to I had to help him get around the city and things like that. But this is a man who had a wife and everything. And you would never saw him like, you know, openly from boy and gay type of person. And I just I don't know, man. I feel like there's something hidden here. I feel like um I feel like there's something hidden here that is going to come to light. And, you know, besides being the homosexual, but I feel like there's something connecting Moises. Obviously, Moises and Julio Iglesias here in these houses in the Dominican Republic. I think, you know, I think he created an orphanage over there too. So, being, that, being said that... After me saying that, I don't want to get too deep into this because I said then everything will be a speculation. I don't want to, you know, I like to speak the truth. Um, I just thought that was a little weird to me. I just think that the falling out about of Oscar and Moises and the fact that he was very good friends with Julio Iglesias and they had the house in Punta Cana. And then Oscar created an orphanage over there. And then now we learn that he actually had boyfriends and everything. Like, what's going on? Like, I just don't like when things are like that, you know? Because you look up to somebody. That's why you can never have idols. Like, don't have idols. Besides the fact that God doesn't like you doing that, it's just that you never know what people do behind closed doors. You never know. Here you are wishing and hoping to be like somebody who is, you know, worshiping, worshiping the kingdom of, of darkness on their time off. On where the curtains are on, when nobody sees what they're doing. So, look at what Sully Bonelli said. By the way, it's all in Spanish, so I do apologize about that. He basically said, he's asked, do you know if Oscar de la Renta was homosexual? And he confirmed me, he said, yes, I don't know if you, I don't, I'm sorry if you don't like this, but he was and he had boyfriends. So take a look at it. Thank you guys so much for coming back to my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Experiencia sexual de Oscar. Siendo tú un hombre abiertamente gay, ¿qué tienes que decir a eso? Oscar era gay? Eh, pues, um, sí. Y al que no le guste lo que estoy diciendo, pues, too bad, porque sí. Eh, y, y sí, lo que pasa es que él siempre estuvo en el closet. Y si no estuvo en el closet realmente, que yo no creo que el, el, el closet de Oscar era tan closet, pero eh, él no quería que esa fuera la percepción del mundo. Él le molestaba, por ejemplo, que Bill Blas, que nunca se casó y eso, él le molestaba que Bill Blas fuera a la mismo nivel de él so socialmente y como diseñador eh, y que Bill fuera realmente gay, que tampoco totalmente abierto, pero no, definitivamente no straight.
¿Conociste alguna relación que tuviera Oscar? Sí. No conmigo, conmigo nunca. A los que se creen que estuvo conmigo, no. Conmigo no. ¿Pero no te enamoró? No. No. Yo no era su tipo. ¿Cómo era su tipo? <risa> depende, depende. Empecé, eh, eh, depende de la época. A él le gustaban altos. Eh, casi siempre como lo que decimos nosotros, como pollo de granja. <risa> Bien americano. En algún momento me dieron la, el trabajo de yo encargarme de un novio que lo trajeron de otro país y yo me encargaba porque él no hablaba inglés y yo le tenía que él me dijo tú te encargas de él eh, y yo le tenía que resolver muchas cosas muy nice una persona super nice eh, muy nice y eh, yo le tenía que resolver muchas cosas y un día, porque tengo que hablar con él todos los días para poderle resolver cosas, y un día me dice, no me gusta mucho el compinche como mío. Yo le digo, ¿Y, ¿y si yo no hablo con él? ¿Cómo yo le voy a resolver las cosas? Yo no tenía nada con él tampoco. Pero sí, eh, más de una. Es posible. <música> Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I hope to see you in the next video.